Oh, today I want to talk about bonds and fixed income securities. Yet again, you can see the other videos in this series if you follow these links right here. Now, today I want to talk about using convexity in real life in a useful way. Now, to refresh your memory, we talked about three terms in this universe. Here we talked about Macaulay duration. That told us what the average amount of time it was for you to wait for a cash flow in present value terms. If we made a small adjustment to that, we got modified duration that gave us a, a sense of the price sensitivity of a bond, told us how much a bond price would change given a change in yield. However, we discovered that was not very accurate, especially as the change in yield uh, increased, right? So we said, well, that's because the price yield relationship is not perfectly linear. So we introduced a concept called convexity, which when we use that correction, got the price much more accurate. But again, it wasn't perfectly accurate. So from an academic standpoint, this was interesting. We learned in our MBA program, but we discovered it was a lot of work to get an answer that was less accurate than the perfectly accurate answer in our spreadsheet. And they were only useful for perfectly parallel shifts in the yield curve. So in my opinion, not very useful, but interesting academically. Speaking of academics, we can take this and think about it from a calculus perspective, put your calculus hat on. So if we take the first derivative of price with respect to interest rates, that's what we're talking about when we talk about duration. And if we think about the second derivative of price with respect to interest rates, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about convexity. So I think that's pretty interesting there. But let's talk about an actual use for convexity in the real world. Recall that as the yield decreases, then the bond price increases. And as the yield increases, the bond price decreases. You can see that in a linear relationship with that blue line here. But we're going to look at two different bonds. We know that this price yield relationship is not perfectly linear. And that's where convexity comes in. So we have two bonds here, a low convexity bond and a high convexity bond. Uh, in the chart here. So what we can see, if we look over at this kind of low yield part of it here, what we discover is that as the yields decrease, the high convexity bond has a bigger price increase. That is a desirable characteristic. And if we look at the other end where we have the high yields, we can see that, that the high convexity bond has a lower price decrease than the other one. So in, in both cases, it's, it's like a win-win, right? You get higher increases when yields go down and you get lower decreases when yields go up. Now you can see here that this curve actually shows that the price of the bond is going up as the yields increase, but that doesn't actually happen. That highlights the error in the convexity adjustment right here. So in reality, uh, you would see this, you know, it's getting closer and closer to flat, but it would still decrease slightly as time went on. Again, that's just part of the error there. So what are the characteristics of bonds that actually have this high convexity? That's a desirable characteristic. Well, it turns out that the longer the maturity, the higher the convexity, that is a desirable characteristic in terms of convexity. Uh, we also see that in terms of the coupon, the lower the coupon payment, then the higher the convexity. And finally, we see that in terms of the yield, then the lower the yield, the higher the convexity. So these are all desirable characters. They come more maturity, lower coupon, and lower yield in terms of if you want that convexity part of it. So the other thing I'm going to point out here finally is that everyone knows this. I'm not, I'm not the only person on the planet that knows this. You, you now have learned it, but everyone that kind of knows this. So if you look at two different bonds that are ex essentially the same, but one has higher convexity than the other, you're going to pay more for it because you get that protection uh, when interest rates change in terms of the valuation of that bond. You either get you know, more increase when, when yields go down or you get a smaller decrease when yields go up. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Brian Kozlowski. Happy trading out there. We'll talk again soon.